There are a lot of variants when it comes to body shapes and climbing. Different heights, builds, and climbing styles have been successful throughout the history of climbing. Recently, Laura Rigora was the fifth woman to climb 515A or 9A, and was also the shortest standing at 4 foot 10. Laura Rigora is definitely on the extreme lower end when it comes to height and climbing, but being on the extreme lower end didn't stop her from being one of the top climbers in the world. I'll definitely be talking about her in a future video, but for now, I wanted to look at the opposite end of the spectrum. I wanted to talk about a climber who is an incredible athlete and one of the tallest professional climbers in the scene who along the way has broken the beta. Let me introduce you to the 6'3 champion climber Kai Leitner. Since I'm not a 6'3 climber with a plus 6 or 7 inch wingspan, I got a little help to give more insight on what it's like to climb when you're at the extreme tall end when it comes to climbers. Hello. Hi Kai. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? I'm alright. I had kind of a late start to the day because I had too much fun yesterday, so oh. I'm kind of Kai and I talked about his fun 4th of July and he gave me a great explanation how his height and wingspan affects his climbing and also how he molded his climbing style around his body's dimensions. Um, so I am 6'3 and my wingspan is plus 6 or 7 actually depending on when I measure it and how tall I am at the time. <laughs> um, but I think that it, it affects my climbing style because since my limbs are so long, a lot of times I have really good at my body awareness and being able to use my feet and understanding like sequencing in order to get through beta because a lot of times because my body type is so unique a lot of um, setters who are creating the climbs aren't my size or a lot of sequences are really set necessarily with me in mind and so I kind of have to figure out my own way and so I feel like even when I'm setting even when I'm reading roots with other competitors I kind of always like think convene in order to see what they're talking about, but also step out on my own because I know that whatever beta that I use is going to be much different from everyone else's. Since Kai is such an extreme in body types, he has to constantly find betas that work for him. Oftentimes, he won't fit in the box, and you might remember me talking about the box in episode 5, which refers to the comfortable range of holds that a climber's body can fit in. In this clip, his coach Shane Messer got the setters to create problems with small boxes to challenge Kai. He uses a move where he turns his knee downwards, a drop knee, to adjust his body tension and center of gravity to make another move. Um, well, when I climbed it, I had no idea actually that Shane had set it for me. Because like, Shane sometimes will talk to setters of gyms I go to behind my back so that, like, to frustrate me. That's what he likes to do. Uh, but, um, but yeah, I, I do remember the climb. Uh, it was like maybe like a couple years ago yeah. or so. But yeah, like I, I've always used drop knees because, in, and honestly, it was never a skill that I learned. It was actually something that was very instinctive mm -hmm. because even as a kid, uh, being a bit tall as another kid in my category, I just like somehow found drop knees to be the easiest way for me to bring my hips into the wall, you know? Because I feel like a lot of times, oh, I think personally all movement and climbing starts with your hips because the closer you are to the wall, the, the more positive holds become and the easier move, movement becomes or the more options you have to choose from the movement. And so whether that's having really open hips or being able to use drop knees or heel hooks or any other form of technique, I feel like that kind of helps you, you know, be a better rock climber. I've talked before how flexibility plays a huge role in climbing and Kai is no exception. He is often seen doing a heel hook above his shoulders to get a good resting position or to make another move. I've personally dubbed it the Kai heel hook since he does it so often. And during the 2017 National Sport Climbing Open, he found his way up at the final moves. Securing the finish hold would mean he would win. The second to last clip was very difficult to clip. And even as other competitors achieved the clip, they struggled on the moves afterwards. You can see Kai's coach Shane Messer struggling on that clip, and Jesse Gruper, even after making the clip and getting the points for it, slipped on the last move. Kai, however, found an amazing over-the-shoulder heel hook to take some weight off his hands and make the final moves. The 
unchallenged. See if he can figure out this clip now. He's climbed higher than most of the other men have. But you see him using that length. Get in a perfect position to make that clip. Yeah, he's our tallest climber out here. 6'2". Two more holes between Kai Leitner and his second national championship. If he can do this move, that is going to be it for Easy. Kai Leitner, the 2017 <laughs> national champion. His second incredible performance from Kai Leitner. <laughs> he is psyched. Well, it's funny because like a lot of time when I read roots, I don't really read them necessarily like knowing all the specific movement. I'll read them based upon like, you know, where I need to be generally, like where my feet probably need to be. And so when I do feel hooks like that, a lot of times it's really instinctive because I can feel when I'm in a body position where I need something to pull my hips in to make moves easier. And so especially when you're clipping because you always want to be in a resting position when you clip. So I guess like when I was up there, I was thinking, okay, these folks are doing so good and uh, the gym was really hot. And so maybe I need to find something better to, to get myself um, to be able to clip this clip. Um, and also because in domestic competitions, clips mean something, like they're actually worth points. And so I'm like, it's better to clip them when you're lower than when you're higher up. And so yeah, I'd probably just find that back heel hook and, and put it there. <laughs> Oh, I feel like when you place a heel hook, it automatically becomes the third leg um, because it's like, I feel like it just gives you so much more support on the wall. Like you instantaneously are able to find less movement. And also it's just an easy way to bring your hips closer to the wall to make movement easier. I just, I think the heel hooks are some of the, the best climbing technique that you can learn as a climber. Because I feel like, I mean, obviously the, the power endurance, and I, sometimes when I'm in training, Shane will force me to use less heel hooks in order to have more endurance. But as a general technique for competition, I feel like it's just, I can't find any other better thing because, like, you can always use heel hooks no matter what kind of hold it is. You're not reliant on a sequence that's a better set in order to use them. You can place them anywhere. I think it's pretty clear that Kai has to think and climb a certain way to fit his body type and oftentimes he finds a tall beta. However, sometimes his tall way of thinking doesn't always work for him. Take for example at the 2018 Bouldering Nationals Qualifier round. On men's problem number two, the boulder opened up with a paddle dyno, followed by a lock-off on a crimp to the finishing hold. Kai was able to slow down the paddle dyno and static it. After getting to the jug, he tried to go straight to the finish math on the air so <laughs> thank you Brian whoa Kai, Kai just Kai. sweeping the leg there what oh my hat Kai Leitner got the finishing hold and then decided not to match it I think he'd realized he wasn't gonna be able to match without getting his feet up I don't know if I've ever seen that before where a competitor actually gets the finishing hold comes back down for a different strategy Looks like he's going to go for it again, and wow, I think he missed it. On the following attempt, he realized his mistake and finished the climb the intended way. And <laughs> Kai just deciding to campus the Sloper Jungle Gym. Let's see if he reevaluates re this time. It's, it's where it can be a double-edged sword to have the length that Kai has, where he can get himself into situations that maybe aren't always intended. Yeah, that's but, right. Uh, for example, Drew... Ruana would never have thought to just try to camp us to the finishing hold. And here's Kai, yeah, getting all bunched up. So two tops for Kai Leitner. I mean, I feel like my thought process on that boulder is similar to my thought process on a lot of them. Because I've been competing for so long, and especially domestically when I know all the setters, it's like, I know a lot of times exactly what the intended sequence is and also the sequences that I can probably fit in to make it work. So a lot of times when I'm looking at a group, I have to think, okay, this is what is probably meant, this is what I'm capable of, and, and, and these are my options. And which one do I choose? And I feel like most of the time I make the right decision, but sometimes I don't. <laughs> and, and I mean, I feel like that video kind of just shows an example of the time where I took a risk and it didn't quite pay off. But I mean, sometimes they do. Uh, but yeah, it's just like, I have like three options in my head and I have to pick which one I want and which one seems more practical. 
So far, we've seen a few clips of how Kai overcomes obstacles with his unique and smart thinking, and got a little bit of insight on his thought process. So now, let's watch this final clip of a pure beta break that Kai found. I'm going to play the clip of Alex Magos climbing this problem first, so you get a perspective on how it was intended to be climbed. There are other holds that are in range for Alex and Kai to use, but this problem only allowed yellow holds and the black volumes to be used, and none of the red holds. I've been getting a lot of comments saying that being tall is cheating, not fair, or the only reason why taller climbers can do hard climbs is because they're tall. I'm sure I'm going to get comments like that even on this video. However, I want to say this. Climbing is a sport that has climbers like Laura Regora at 4'10 climbing 515A, climbers like Kai Leitner winning championships at 6'3, and climbers in all sorts of shapes and sizes climbing extremely hard and winning competitions left and right. Climbing isn't a debate about height, it's about knowing how to use your body efficiently, thinking creatively, trying your best, and above everything else, having fun. I want to give a huge shout out to Kai for being a part of this video. Anyway, um, anything you want to shout out, what you're working on, feel the platform is yours, I'll blast out whatever you want. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I just went that part out. Um, follow me on Instagram, <laughs> at Kai <Leitner. laughs> Go follow Kai on Instagram, I'll put the link to your Instagram in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe, and as always, keep crushing it. <laughs>